back to the show. This is The Law Show on CL 650. This land is your land. This land is my land. From Mona Vista to the Vancouver Island. From the Arctic Circle. We could just listen to that all day. That's the perfect song for The Law Show. This land was made for you and me. All right. We're talking about getting into Canada, immigration law with Gordon Maynard and Rudy Kisher from MKS Law in downtown Vancouver. Now over to you, Rudy. You have to sort of tell me how you got these points that are possibly going to change our immigration uh, rules and laws. There was a liberal uh, town hall meeting uh, in uh, the Don Valley riding, which is uh, in Toronto, close to where I grew up, actually. And uh, the MP uh, Yasmin Ratsani uh, had asked uh, the minister, uh, John McCallum, the minister of immigration and refugees, and Citizenship Canada come speak. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. McCallum couldn't uh, attend and his chief of staff, Bernie Darable, came to speak. He was actually the architect uh, behind uh, the resettlement of the refugees, uh, the 25,000 refugees that arrived in Canada. And he spoke uh, and raised a bunch of uh, coming changes. Uh, somebody attended at that meeting. We're not sure exactly who, but that was circulated on uh, uh, some uh, of what was said. A copy of what was said was, it was basically circulated around. So we're not sure how accurate it is, but it was circulated among a bunch of immigration lawyers, and uh, we're talking about those 17 points today. All right, so the next one is uh, Immigration, Refugee, and Citizenship Canada. Did I get it right? Yes. All right, uh, that's the ministry. Um, the <coughs> website will be opened up to more languages. That's probably a good thing. No? No? <laughs> Look. See, what I with think all... is... Here's, here's, what, here's what I've come to find with you guys. Whatever I think is a good thing, you don't... And then what you think is a good thing, I don't... I don't like. The immigration website is, in some respects, maybe too many respects, incomprehensible already. Uh -huh. Putting it into 19 languages is not going to improve that. Okay. What they need to do is revamp their structure of the website. Okay. It, it's an interesting thing. In, in the world of the Internet, they used to have their policy in paper manuals mm -hmm. okay paper manuals and at the bottom of each page would be a date on when it changed and it was put out in binders and you could collect it there it was now they put it onto the internet and the problem with the with the whole system it's terrible is and the whole website let alone their manuals is that there's links all over the place. Right. You just keep you adding can, more stuff. You yeah. can just keep moving down the path. It's like taking that trail in the woods, and you never know where it's going to lead to. Nowhere do you have everything collected cohesively into one area. So you, you, let me guess. You don't have a problem with maybe it being in other languages. You just want the website to be better. Yeah. It needs to be better. <laughs> well, I just don't know how accurate it's going to be, how they're going to keep it up. Um, then you, right. you, you end up into translation issues. Uh, well, if it's going as know. well as paying uh, federal employees, if you heard that story about the federal employees in that game? Oh, yeah, right? not getting oh, yeah. paid. So for obviously months. the uh, IT department at, uh, in Parliament Hill is maybe laying a little bit of work. Yeah. <laughs> there, there, there's things they can do on the website for sure, but uh, translating it to 90-plus languages seems to be putting energies in the wrong place. So get the, get the website fixed. Yeah. And yeah. then we're on the other languages. Yeah, and, you know, we're looking for immigrants really that, that speak the language, right? That's kind of the, the avenue that we're going, right? Yeah. So, you know... You well, know. I think maybe all the uh, idiosyncrasies and all the fine details maybe in another language would help, right? Yeah. All yeah. right, so we've covered that one. <laughs> 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 all right, what's the next one? Go ahead, Drew. No, they're talking about... Uh, the, well, I guess we want to talk about the 300,000. It's not... No, no, for number 14. All yeah, processes. Yeah, they're, they're saying they're going to examine all the processes as why and being asked over and over again, backlogs are to be attacked. I, I think that's a great idea. I mean, the, the Immigration Department is the only, the Auditor General did a re review of the, of the Immigration Department said it is the only department in the government left that doesn't have service standards. Right. So basically, I'll, I'll give you, and, and this also, I can, I can give you an example of a Service Canada. I called Service Canada, so I've got a, an application. Um, the processing time is supposed to be done, and uh, the average processing time is eight weeks. I call and I say, well, it's, it's now been 16 weeks, and my client's application is not being processed. Why? They say, we don't know. Um, you know, the, the average processing is eight, but it can vary from eight to 25 weeks, and we're not going to, what they call, elevate it to a supervisor to look into it until you reach 25 weeks. Hmm. So this is someone who where the employer is saying, I can't find someone to do the job. 
and I'm not going to get an answer. No one's going to give me an answer to, to my for application half a year. for half a year. How is that business supposed to run mm-hmm. or, or, or plan to keep a job open for that long? And they won't even tell me a reason. So you're telling me that someone's application is getting processed in eight weeks and my application is sitting on a different desk and it's going to take 25 weeks for no good reason except it's sitting on a different desk. So this point so, says backlogs are going to be attacked. I guess that's more manpower. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a good thing. Hopefully. I, Hopefully. Yeah. I mean, if we want the best and the brightest, and I think the conservatives tried to address this in sort of this express entry system, the best and brightest, they're trying to get their lives done. They're trying to move places and do things. They're not going to sit and wait around, right? If you're telling me if somebody's wanting to immigrate, you're saying it's going to take two or three years. They're like, well, I'm going to go someplace else. I can't put my life on hold. And so I, th- I think if they want to keep doing that, they've got to address that. Uh, I, I, I would like to comment further on this one. Yeah, though. go ahead. Um, it says all processes are being examined and the question why is being asked over and over. First of all, asking why is great. Mm -hmm. You should ask it every day, everywhere you look. Why, why, why? Sometimes when we deal with the government, we ask them why and we don't get back a straight answer. You must always ask why. There must always be a reason why things are done this way. It is just processes. I hope it's also policy, but but re-examining everything and saying why, good for them. Good. I approve. I have a quick question before we move on here. How much how much uh, contact do you get with senior uh, people in the ministry or the or the minister? Do you ever get to speak to these people and tell them what you think about the way the system works? Do you have forums for that? We don't. We have forums. Yeah, we we have annual meetings. Canadian Bar Association, uh, you know, put, puts on a, an annual CLE. And they come. And they come. And well, we they do come. They do come. And, and they're very open to, to hearing our comments, right? And we okay. have an there's an annual practices committee with the, in regards to the Immigration Refugee Board that meets uh, twice a year in Ottawa, and so they, they they listen to our concerns. Well, not not to mention the National CBA section, which is about how many people now? Twenty five people uh, from across Canada, all practicing lawyers. Uh, that section has a continuing dialogue with the government. Well, that's good because yeah. that's where you can ask those questions. Why? Yep. So uh, in the last couple of minutes here, uh, any other points you want to touch on? I think the 300,000. I mean, we've seen uh, Minister McCallum, when I saw him speak when he came to Vancouver, uh, you know, was very surprised that when he went to the immigration department said, we want to process 25,000 refugees. They came back and said, well, you know, the problem is we can only process 300,000 people a year. We're not really set up. And so he said, you know, his his thought is that that should be expanded. It was clear to me, he was sort of dropping a hint that they look like they're going to raise the number. And here that's what we see, point 16, is 300,000 is not the max for the permanent residence program. So I think we're going to see, you know, remind listeners that a year ago it was 280,000 people. This year it's 305,000 people. That's the number of people that are going to become permanent residents in Canada. That's the target. Um, this minister's talking about increasing that number. Right? Mm. And Gordon, do you want to touch on the last one in our last minute here? Settlement programs are going to be expanded. I, I presume you're talking about the support programs for persons who are coming to Canada to mm-hmm. settle. As Language, I'm thinking, is a big one. Well, yeah, but in the economic program, those people are supposed to be ready to settle, hit the ground with their feet running. Right. Not, they don't need settlement programs because okay. they have a job and whatnot. I think this is aimed more at the humanitarian and compassionate angle and the resettled refugees, and they are the ones that do need help to resettle. So, yeah. All right. So of these points that we've talked about today, are you hopeful most of them will be addressed and passed? Am I hopeful? Or are you, or, or, do you <laughs> hope that? <laughs> I, I, think, I think these are good issues that are being raised. Do I expect that all of them will be addressed satisfactorily? No. Mm-hmm. Um, time will tell. I mean, you can only do so much. Mm-hmm. You have to pick your targets and, and work accordingly. But this government is ambitious. I, I, I think it's great to see that uh, Mr. McCallum has now turned his attention away from the refugee issue, right, which w- had to be addressed, and he addressed yep. it quickly, and now he's got time to look at this stuff, and I think that's what's we're happening, and, and he looks like he wants to make changes. That's, so that's good, good to hear. Yeah. All right. Uh, Gordon Maynard and Rudy Kisher from MKS Law in downtown Vancouver, uh, immigration lawyers and partners at that firm uh, at Granville and Hastings in downtown Vancouver. Thank you both for coming in. Thank great you, to Sam. have you. It's a fascinating part of the law that always seems to be changing each each month. We'll continue with the, these gentlemen at a later date. I'm Zach Spencer. Thanks for listening to The Law Show on CL650.